Hailing from the picturesque Kays region, nestled in the heart of Mali, Traoré's journey began with his formative years spent in the vibrant town of Kida. Fueled by a thirst for knowledge and adventure, he embarked on a transformative educational odyssey that led him across continents to the prestigious military academy in Frigis, France. After absorbing the rich tapestry of military expertise in the French Academy, Traoré felt the pull of his homeland, Mali, which had recently gained independence in 1959. Returning to his roots in 1960, he eagerly embraced the opportunity to contribute to the fledgling nation's development. His dedication and prowess saw him swiftly rise through the ranks, attaining the esteemed position of second lieutenant in 1961, followed by a promotion to lieutenant in 1963. Eager to broaden his horizons and share his expertise, Traoré embarked on a mission to Tanganyika, where he served as a military instructor to the burgeoning liberation movements. As history unfolded, Tanganyika would merge with Zanzibar to form the new state of Tanzania. Amidst the winds of change sweeping across Africa, Traoré remained steadfast in his commitment to empowering emerging nations. Returning to Mali with a wealth of experience and insights gained from his international endeavors, Traoré assumed the role of an instructor at the prestigious École Militaire Interarms in Kadi. Here, he imparted invaluable knowledge to a new generation of military leaders, shaping the future trajectory of Mali's defense forces. On the fateful day of November 19, 1968, Moussa Traoré played a pivotal role in orchestrating a coup d'état that ousted President Madibo Keita from power, marking a significant turning point in Mali's political landscape. Rising to prominence, Traoré assumed the mantle of leadership as the president of the Kamite Militaire de Liberation Nationale, effectively becoming the de facto head of state of Mali. Under Traoré's rule, political dissent was swiftly quashed as all forms of political activity were outlawed, plunging the nation into a state of authoritarian control. Captain Tikoro Bagayoko oversaw a regime of surveillance, with informants monitoring intellectuals and educators who opposed the military regime's grip on power. Traoré wasted no time in dismantling the socialist economic policies championed by his predecessor, Madibo Keita, opting for a shift towards a more pragmatic economic approach. The dawn of Traoré's tenure coincided with a period of adversity, as Mali grappled with the devastating impact of a severe drought in 1972-1973, exacerbating the already challenging socio-economic conditions. In a bid to legitimize his rule, Traoré promulgated a revised constitution in 1974, heralding the advent of the Malian Second Republic. Despite promises of transitioning towards civilian governance, the military junta led by Traoré retained a firm grip on power. In a carefully orchestrated move, Traoré established the Democratic Union of the Malian People UDPM, in September 1976, positioning it as the sole political entity tasked with governing Mali under a facade of non-ideological democratic centralism. The semblance of stability under Traoré's regime was marred by instances of political repression and human rights abuses. The suspicious death of former President Madibo Keita in detention in 1977 sparked widespread outrage, prompting a crackdown on dissenting voices. Traoré's administration resorted to violent measures to quell opposition, epitomized by the arrest of high-ranking officials accused of plotting against the regime. Despite sporadic attempts to liberalize the political landscape, such as appointing the historian Alpha Omar Konare as arts minister, Traoré's regime remained entrenched in authoritarianism. Student protests in 1980 were brutally suppressed, resulting in casualties and further exacerbating tensions within Malian society. Traoré's grip on power was solidified through a series of tightly controlled elections, where he was invariably the sole candidate, reaffirming his presidency. The UDPM, bolstered by its auxiliary organizations, sought to maintain its stranglehold on power by co-opting various segments of Malian society. Internationally, Traoré assumed the role of chairman of the Organization of African Unity from May 1988 to July 1989, projecting an image of stability and leadership on the continental stage. Despite outward appearances of stability, discontent simmered beneath the surface as dissatisfaction with Traoré's authoritarian rule and economic policies mounted. Calls for multi-party democracy grew louder, fueled by grievances over austerity measures imposed by international financial institutions. Traoré, however, remained adamant, dismissing calls for democratic reforms and insisting that Mali was not yet ready for such a transition. Tensions between Mali, under the leadership of Moussa Traoré, and Burkina Faso, led by Thomas Sankara, reached a boiling point on December 25, 1985. Traoré's regime was grappling with mounting social unrest, exacerbated by economic challenges and political discontent. 
The simmering rivalry between the two neighboring nations escalated when officials in Burkina Faso initiated a census in disputed border communities. Responding swiftly to what they perceived as a provocation, Malian forces launched an offensive on Christmas Day. Given Mali's military superiority over Burkina Faso, guerrilla warfare tactics were employed as the conflict unfolded, with raids conducted on both sides of the border. As hostilities persisted, the toll of the conflict became increasingly apparent, exacting a heavy human and economic cost on both nations. Recognizing the need to de-escalate the situation, efforts were made in early 1986 to broker a peace agreement. The agreement, while averting further bloodshed, led to a palpable tension between Thomas Sankara and Musa Traore, prompting them to steer clear of direct confrontation. The resolution of the conflict had mixed implications for Mali. While it alleviated immediate security concerns, the lingering animosity between the two leaders threatened to strain diplomatic relations and hinder regional cooperation. However, for Traore, the perceived demonstration of strength in the face of external aggression bolstered his popularity domestically, albeit at the expense of enduring tensions with Burkina Faso. In 1990, the political landscape in Mali witnessed significant upheaval with the emergence of several opposition groups aiming to challenge Musa Traore's authoritarian rule and advocate for a pluralistic political environment. The National Congress for Democratic Initiative CNID, was established by the lawyer Mount Agatol, while the Alliance for Democracy in Mali Adima, was founded by Abdramain Baba and historian Alpha Omar Konare. These organizations, along with the Association of Students and Scholars of Mali AEM, and the Malian Association of Human Rights AMDH, sought to promote democratic principles and contest Traore's grip on power. However, Traore's regime responded with brutality to dissent. On March 22, 1991, a massive protest march in central Bamako was violently suppressed, resulting in an estimated death toll of 150 individuals. In the aftermath of this crackdown, Colonel Amadou Tamani Touré, the commander of Traoré's Presidential Guard, took decisive action, removing Traoré from office and placing him under arrest just four days later. Under the leadership of Colonel Touré, a transitional committee for the salvation of the people was established to oversee the transition to democracy, which culminated in democratic elections a year later. Traoré's subsequent trials reflected the gravity of his regime's actions. In February 1993, he was sentenced to death for political crimes, primarily linked to the brutal suppression of pro-democracy demonstrators in Bamako. Although his death sentence was later commuted, Traoré faced further legal troubles. In 1999, he and his wife, Mariam Traore, were condemned to death for economic crimes, including embezzlement during his tenure. However, President Alpha Omar Konare commuted these sentences to life imprisonment. Before leaving office in May 2002, Konare further pardoned the couple, citing national reconciliation as the motivation. Traore's legacy, once reviled, underwent a degree of rehabilitation under President Touré, with the former dictator being acknowledged, albeit informally, as a former head of state. Many of Traoré's former supporters rallied around Chojel Maiga's patriotic movement for renewal party MPR. Traoré and his wife retreated from public life, in part due to declining health. Musa Traoré passed away on September 15, 2020, in Bamako, Mali, just 10 days shy of his 84th birthday. The exact cause of his death remains undisclosed. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.